Verse 24, but unto you I say, now here's something interesting. God's saying, but those of you, so these are contrasted from the people who are guilty at 23, okay? So there are people who did not join verse 23. But unto you I say, God is speaking to these people, and unto the rest in Thyatira. So there are other people in Thyatira church that didn't join this system. As many as have not this doctrine, so they don't have this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak. They don't know much how deep Satan was working while they were, uh, while they were speaking this and deceiving souls. I will put upon you none other burden. God's not going to burden them more than that. Okay, so this is very important to understand, is that there's a big excuse going around, what about the heathen who never heard the word, you know? Oh, you know, you can't say that about, you know, my dear old Catholic grandmother, you know, she loved the church, worshipped the system, she was very sincere, she loves Jesus more than you, she ran around the image on her bloody knees, etc. You know, what, uh, you can't say that that person's going to hell, etc. Listen, number one, if you read verse 23, God searched their hearts already, remember? So he knows what they were thinking while you don't. The second thing is this. The second thing is, in verse 24, this is a great proof text along with Romans 2, that God is not going to punish or judge a person if they don't know much. That's See, that's the thing. So here's the thing is that they don't have this doctrine. And let's be honest, a lot of Catholics in our day and age, they don't, they're not really familiar with its doctrine. They, you'd be surprised. They just go because of culture, family, tradition, and religion. See? So it's important to understand that fact. And not only that, there's a lot of people, I mean, this is not just uh, Catholics, obviously. This is every church out there including our church, yes, including Bible-believing Baptist churches like ours, yes. This includes everybody. What you got to understand is that a lot of them don't know the depths of Satan. Yeah. See, they don't know how Satan was infiltrating all the churches. So during that time, you just loved Jesus. That's why you went to church, right? It's not like, you know, God's going to send lightning from heaven, burn you and something like that. If God judges you with hellfire or any pain on this earth, you got to realize this. It's according to verse 23. He knows your heart. He's not going to do wrong. But he's not going to send it on you if you're innocent. Amen. See, they don't know the depths of Satan. So they don't have this doctrine technically speaking because they weren't really familiar with it. And they don't know the depths, how Satan was deep into this. That was a lot of you, right? That's why God's, it was God's grace and mercy. You eventually got saved. You eventually filtered out the wrong doctrine. And you eventually ended up here. That's why when you're, this is very important. You Bible believers are so bad at this, and onliners too, so this is something you better understand. Because you grow more and more truth, the tendency after that is to correct and critique people around you more and more. And that kind of spirit is where you reach a point where you think you know more than the person. And when you think that you know more than the person because you know the truth while they don't know the truth, then that unconsciously becomes pride. That's why when you're street preaching, you don't act like a conceited jerk and then just yell at these people and call them, you know, every, uh, they're not technically saying the F word, but the other F word, which I'm not going to say. And then they would call them a prostitute, whore, and etc. Now, what kind of spirit is that? Well, it's done in truth. It's done in truth, but it's not done in right spirit. The Bible says they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just truth, but in spirit. Not only that, not, not a lot of them know the depths of Satan. So when you're witnessing to somebody, where are you going to focus on? The salvation of their soul or what you're right about? They, a lot of them don't know the depths of Satan. Amen. So that's why you got to keep that in mind when you're witnessing to these people. When you're witnessing to people, you act like a gentleman, you act like a lady, you don't act like a jerk. Amen. And to call yourself a Bible believer and King James only and rejoicing about homosexuals getting killed, you are not a Bible believing church. You're not one of us. You are of the devil. <clears throat> you think that you know the depths of Satan to correct people, but you are stuck in the depth of Satan yourself. Because he is king over all the children of pride. And it is that proud spirit of yours 
where you get around and bash all the other people around you. <clears throat> Think about this. I mean, how did I suck onliners in this ministry and you into our church? Now, you know me, I don't compromise. And I'll be sarcastic if I have to. But I do everything at a right time with the right person and under the right situation. That's why I tricked all of you. You ended up right here, right? <laughs> what if I called the first person who walked in, I called, you, I called the person a whore. You think you're going to come back to this church? Yeah. Okay, let's return to our main text here. Uh, so keep Revelation 2.24 in mine, I will put upon you none other burden, and that'll be a nice verse to put 1 Corinthians 10, 13 next to that. That's good. And you know that verse. God will not give you a temptation or a burden greater than you can bear. So remember that in your mind. So when you dedicate yourself into a Bible-believing church, yes, there is sacrifice. Who says that uh, serving Jesus doesn't, uh, doesn't come with a cost? Obviously, it's hardship and there's a cost. But don't scare yourself into getting more involved for the Lord. God is not going to give you a burden greater than you can bear. Either he's a liar or you're a liar. See, so keep that in mind. And I think this, I think the devil is a liar planting the seed of doubt in your mind saying, look at how so-and-so is doing well, but you're not doing that well. You got a lot to catch up and you got to do this. Why bother coming to church when you already skipped three services? And then, you know, look at you. So that's the devil. That's not God, the Holy Spirit. If you think that's God, the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin, that's wrong. That's the devil putting false guilt into your heart. All right, let's go back to our main text. God will never do that to you. Verse 25, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So until Jesus comes, God wants them to already hold what they have. So God's not, remember... Previous verse, he's not giving them a greater burden than they can carry, right? So he's saying, what you currently have, hold fast. That's a great God. Well, you know, my Bible progress not that great. My soul winning progress not that great. My cleaning off my sin is not that great. Hey, God's not going to give you a burden greater than you can bear. So, so if I were you, I will not give it up and throw back myself into the world and to the bunch of wolves. I will hold fast what I currently have. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you're completely right with God, but I'll tell you one thing, being half right with God is better than being no right with God. Yeah. And getting at least half of my rewards is better than zero rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Getting one city to rule is a pretty good thing <laughs> compared to zero. Now, if I were you, you know, I'd hold fast what I have. Now, remember, what were they holding fast on to? Verse 19, remember? They had a last work, which was more than the first work. So, remember, they were supposed to prioritize first works, not last works. Last works is similar to Ephesus. Ephesus forgot their first works. Ephesus was zealous. They served God. They did a lot of things in the church but they left their first work, which is their first love. That's the thing with Thyatira. They may have left, left out their first love, but at least they're, they have, they're working, they're doing something for God. At least they have a last thing going on. So that's why this church, if I were you, I don't care if we're not doing that great. We may not be the church of Ephesus. Now, don't get me wrong. I do care about that. I want us to emphasize first love. But look, I mean, if our church is dying out, I, I'd hold fast to what I have. I don't care. If my singing is, sounds half dead, I don't care. I prefer a half dead singing church service than no church service. And we play rock music for the devil. Okay? I prefer that. So hold fast what you currently have as a church. During this timeline, church age application, we can see that. So here are, uh, here's something what you can see. If this time period is correct... This can really fit in with this because during the timeline of the Protestant Reformation and before the Protestant Reformation, you had uh, all these other believers at time. Uh, excuse me. This is not the Protestant Reformation. Protestant Reformation was after 1500. Before the Protestant Reformation, during that time, you had people who were standing up for the truth. You had John Huss, John Wycliffe, and then you also have the old time Waldensians who are called Vaudois. And you had people called Paulicians. 
Now, the oldest people, if you want to get like really back before Wycliffe, and the ones who are like us, fanatical, it was uh, Paulicians and the Waldensians, or Vaudois. The Vaudois were responsible for your King James Bible translation, old Latin manuscript, competing with Vatican and Sinaiticus. Paulicians, they were like dispensationalists like you in emphasizing Pauline epistle. That's a good combination of King James onlyism, dispensationalism. These two were actually considered very well learned in scripture that the Catholic Church did not like that time. And these two during that time were considered to be fundamentalists actually even. Some scholars said, some scholars said that. Some scholars said they were considered the fundamentalist extremists of those days. Sounds like a good crowd then, right? <laughs> Sounds like a good crowd. So during that timeline, they had their last works. So despite of the uh, main, uh, the infection of apostasy during Thyatira, because during that time, remember, it was all a church religious and secular system, mingling of it. It was completely dead. Legalism, legalism, legalism. Despite of that, where they forgot their first love for the Lord Jesus Christ, and then they lost it, and it became a church system. And during that timeline, there was no love that time during Christendom, the Catholic Church Dark Ages. It was very cold, actually. They mistreated people. But despite of that, at least there's some sort of last work going on, see? So that would fit nicely uh, with this time period. Actually, both time periods, it can work that way. So both time periods can work that way. But you're going to have to drop, uh, drop out Wycliffe and Huss if we're going to put it right here. 